Hey, that was a pretty good Jaguar throw. I think we're actually pin high. Now let's go toss some plastic. And we've made it to East Roswell Disc Golf Park in Roswell, Georgia. We have another bitter cold day. It is extremely windy out here. Hopefully we can still play pretty good. We're starting off with a nice and simple 270 foot dead straight shot. Pretty good warm up hole. We are gonna full send our Envy. All right, not the start we were looking for, but let's see if we can start off with a long putt. Well, after our lackluster start, I'm guessing we still have probably 85, 90 feet, really long putt, slightly uphill for the two. All right, not a bad little run for the par. Hole two, 211 feet. It is an absolute laser beam. You could go for some big Annie shot. You could maybe even sneak in a hyzer, but of course we're gonna try to go right up the gut with our Envy. Well, we went a little wide and we're gonna have a long putt, not a hot start. It was pretty early in the morning to go for such a skinny gap like that. I can't even see the basket. I know we got a big ante shot. I'm going to toss the Pewaka walk up there. Hopefully we can make this in and get a bird. Oh, nice shot. Hole three, 371 feet. It looks like we want to go with a really big ante shot. I'm not entirely sure where the basket is up there, but we are going to full send our Halo Wraith. Man, the wind pushed that throw down in a hurry, but I'm pretty happy with that line. We are still 80 feet from the basket. It is quite a bit uphill. I don't anticipate us hitting any long ones today in all this crazy wind, but we sure can try. I'm gonna give it a full run with my hammer. Oh, you know what, I'll take it. Threaded the needle a little bit. So this morning at the gas station, I could not figure out why the cashier would not take me seriously. I almost felt offended, but could it be the bacon wrapped band-aids? Possibly, that could possibly be it. Hole four, it's only 225 feet. It is quite a bit uphill. And because of the ripping headwind, we are gonna go with our Kia. Fight it. All right, that is exactly what we needed. Maybe we can get something started now. For the two, hole five, 420 feet, dead straight. All I'm trying to do right now is get through that initial gap up there and then make a play for the pin. We are gonna full send our Wraith. Oh, really nice shot. Really nice throw. I couldn't have asked for better there. We will take that. I think we almost skipped into by far my longest ace of my career. Very happy with that shot. Let's go. Really nice hole. That's what we needed to get fired up for the rest of this round. Hole six, 360 feet. It is a slight ante the entire way, way uphill. We definitely want to go with something more flippy. We are going to try my Proto Hades. I have not thrown this on the channel for quite a while, but let's see how it does. Oh, overturned it. Oh. Nice little kick back into the fairway though. We are exactly 100 feet from the pin, way uphill. I am gonna go with the sidearm justice flick shot simply because it sounds fun. Fight the wind. Oh, that was a really bad choice. 
That was a really bad choice. We have left ourselves a pretty long tester putt, especially in this wind. Hopefully we can knock it down and save our three. Nope, sure can't. Sure can't. We did get a pretty nasty roll on that one. Quick little update for you guys. I'm not feeling the best. I'm currently fighting off a massive poison ivy outbreak. I'm allergic to one thing in this world and it is poison ivy. My whole face is covered, my chest, my hands. It's something I've struggled with my entire life. And also when I got here, I looked at my bag and realized the precious championship boss is gone. I have no idea where that thing is. So I'm gonna try to finish this course up real quick and then I'm gonna go out searching, drive all over the place. I really hope we find it. I really, really hope we find it. As you guys know, that is my favorite driver by far. Hole seven, 285 feet, dead straight. You do want a left finish, quite a bit uphill. I am kind of stuck in between discs on this one, but we are gonna go with our PFN T-Bird. Looking good. Hopefully we have a putt. We're playing pretty good today. Well, I did finish quite a bit more left than I originally thought, leaving us another long tester putt for the two. Oh, good run. Dang it. Holy 195 feet. We have an absolute laser once again, slightly uphill. I am going to go with my champion Rhino this time. The Envy has never handled the wind too well. <sighs> Oh, it's going to hyzer out. That's horrible. That's a really bad shot. <sighs> Probably should have went with the Envy. Not great. I honestly could not remember the last time I turned around that fast after a tee shot. I knew that was bad the second it left my hand. We are on the fairway of hole 16 currently. We have a very long, tricky uphill putt for the two. <sighs> Oh man, well, we went for it. We went for it. We really want to focus up now to save our par, probably 22 feet uphill for the three. Yes, 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 yes. We needed that, absolutely. Let's go. Hole nine, 343 feet. It looks like it might be off to the right a little bit. I frankly, I have no idea. It looks like it suits up for a turnover sidearm. So that's what we're gonna try with our Firebird. That looks really good. It is too high though. And it looks like we got hit straight down. We should be able to work with that. I think we were on the right page with the turnover sidearm shot there. We obviously just threw it way too high in the air. We still have 130 feet, very tricky shot. I think I am gonna go with a big Annie shot with the P Waka Waka. Get through. My goodness, only the P Waka Waka could make that shot. Really good par save. Hole nine break, and obviously, guys, we are no longer at East Roswell. I absolutely flew through the course so I could go try to track down my champion boss, but don't worry, we did find it. And believe it or not, guys, we are back in Michigan. For this whole nine break, I just wanna to touch on a few of the favorite cities that I passed through on our long six month journey on the road with good old Greta. The first one that I'm gonna start off with out of all of the cities I visited, Fort Wayne, Indiana by far had the smoothest running disc golf community that I had ever seen. They have a ton of efficiently run league nights. They have big community chats. They have a bunch of kind of pop-up 
doubles nights. It was very impressive to see and it was awesome to be a part of. Number two, this one is not so much disc golf related, but the most enjoyable city that I stayed in without question was Frankfurt, Kentucky. People of Frankfurt, Kentucky were extremely polite. They were very nice. I just ran into a few people randomly on the disc golf course. We ended up going out, having a doubles night. We played Wessex Farm, which is a beautiful course. If you don't remember it, make sure to go back on my channel and check it out. The third place that really stuck out to me on the road was Morristown, Tennessee. Now, Morristown is a very interesting place because they have a ton of disc golf. All the disc golf you could ever want. I think they had six courses in that city. I believe they had plans to build one or two more courses in the city. Some of the courses were getting holes pulled. Some of them didn't seem that well maintained. They only had one disc golf shop that was kind of away from everything, but that disc golf shop was amazing. I did spend a couple days there. I would highly recommend anybody checking that place out. But for some reason, Morristown really kind of, it just stuck out to me. It didn't quite feel like everything was acting as a cohesive unit, but moving forward, Morristown is definitely going to be a huge place of interest for the disc golf world. Feels amazing to be back in my home state, the mitten, good old Michigan. I want to thank all of you who tagged along for that crazy journey of going all the way down and back up the United States. I'm very excited to videotape more courses in my home state. I still will be van lifing pretty much the entire time. I've already done all of my true local courses, so we will be hitting the road, but we're going to stay in the home state for quite a while. Thank you guys for being a part of the journey. Hole 10, 251 feet uphill, another dead straight tunnel shot. We have yet to hit one of these today and normally they are kind of my strong suit. So hopefully the envy will come through for us. <clears throat> I think we went a little too straight on that one. We might have a putt though. Well, we did come up quite a bit short, but we did hit that line that we were looking for. Hopefully we can knock this one down, probably 33 feet downhill for the two. Oh, the putting's feeling good today. We've hit low a couple times, but well, the putting's been average. The putting's been okay today. Hole 11, we have another dead straight one. It is uphill 210 feet. We do have a Mando up there. Hopefully our Envy can come through for us one more time. Just another one of those days, playing really good, get to the simple holes and just mess them up. As expected, we did hyzer out into the woods. The basket does have a very cool decoration around it though, I will give it that. We've left ourselves a tricky right to left putt for the two, probably about 34, 35 feet. Oh, we tried for the par. Hole 12, this one is pretty fun. 222 feet dead straight as you can see we have a little artificial bunker made up there that is ob we are going to full send our champion rhino really nice shot for the two Hole 13 and this course sure does love its short tunnel shots. We have another one, 214 feet on an absolute rope. It looks like there is a backdoor hyzer lane, but obviously we need to work on our tunnel shots. Oh man, we just leaked a little bit out to the right. looks like we got a pretty bad kick. There is a lot of really fun ace runs here. Unfortunately, we picked a very windy day, so we can't give them a better run. Hole 14, yet again, another tunnel shot, 251 feet. Again, it looks like there might be kind of a backdoor skip hyzer lane off to the right. Because nothing else seems to be working, we are gonna full send the Jaguar. Hey, 
That was a pretty good Jaguar throw. I think we're actually pin high. And that goes to show you if the normal discs aren't working, sometimes you have to get a little creative. Hole 15, 249 feet, dead straight. It does look like we want some right to left action. We do have to get up and over this hill. We are gonna full send our Kia. Don't hit it. Oh, we all knew it was gonna happen. Sometimes you just know, as soon as you let it go, it's hitting that tree you're staring right at. We have left ourselves an 85 footer downhill for the two. <sighs> Holy wind, get down. For the par. Something I brought up a few times is the fact that sometimes I feel like a short tee is not necessary. This one almost feels like a pride thing. You know what I mean? Because that's just like, <laughs> like every hole had a good short tee pad and they were not gonna let this one slip by without one. Hole 16, this is a long one, 524 feet dead straight. We have a lot of traffic going on. I don't really know how to handle uphill super windy shots, but we are going to full send the wraith and see what happens. Thank goodness the wraith is coming through for us today. That felt really good. With the massive elevation gain that we had, we still have a long way to go. We have landed in a very tricky spot. I have to try to get out of the woods here. Very small tunnel. We are going to full send the Envy. Hopefully we can make it down there. Man, I don't think I've ever been this out of sync with the Envy. We still have 170 feet to the pin. Really unfortunate. Kind of feels like we just threw away our good drive there. We are going to take our Pro Rhino, send it up. We need a little right to left action. Get up there. Oh, oh boy. Not ideal. Not ideal gonna be a long putt. It's really time for us to focus up here. We need to knock this putt down, get our par, and move on. Nope. Oh man. Bummer. Bummer of a meltdown hole. Hole 17, 397 feet. Looks like the basket's tucked way off to the right, but we just need to head straight for a long time. I'm gonna full send the Valkyrie up there and we'll see what happens. Flip, flip. All right, we went a little too high, but I think we got up there quite a ways. Here's where we ended up. We are still 110 feet from the basket. Not the worst line in the world, but definitely not a great one. We are gonna full send it with our Pro Rhino. I knew I was gonna hit that little tree. I knew I was gonna hit that little tree. For the three, and rounding out our very fun day here at East Roswell DGC, we have hole 18, 315 feet, dead straight, way downhill. We are gonna full send our Kotuku. <clears throat> oh, that's gonna hyzer out. Oh, that tree kick may have helped us a little bit. We have left ourselves a nice little tester putt to end the round on. Hopefully we can end on a good note. Oh no, not a very good note. Four of the three. And that wraps up today's video at East Roswell Park in Roswell, Georgia. And guys, as you saw throughout the video, this course absolutely loves its tunnel shots. One very impressive thing about East Roswell is the fact that this entire course takes up a very small chunk of land. And when you look at what they had to work with, it is pretty impressive. The T signs got the job done. The T pads were in great shape. The signage holds 
hole, the hole wasn't really needed being that the course is so small. It did have some good elevation shots, but really all around, nothing stuck out too much, especially compared to some of the amazing courses that we have visited here in Georgia. I did enjoy the back and forth between some really long kind of bomber holes and the short and technical holes, but as you guys saw, it definitely got a little repetitive, and that is the biggest downside of East Roswell. This is definitely a course that's not going to require a tool bag, a ton of different shot shapes to lay down a good score. East Roswell is proving quite difficult for me to come up with a rating. There are definitely some upsides, some downsides, but I think overall, I'm gonna give it the solid, well-rounded score of 7.3 out of 10. It is definitely a very serviceable disc golf course. I don't think it has a ton of replayability. I did enjoy my time at East Roswell. I'm definitely not itching to play it again, but I think for what they have and what they created, it's definitely a solid course. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Now it's your turn to go toss some plastic. <laughs>